Okay, hello, this is video lecture number 37. Uh, today we are talking about rural communalism and urban popular culture. We've got a few sections to cover today. First, Mother Ann Lee and the Shakers, Arthur Brisbane and Fourierism, John Humphrey Noyes and the Oneida Community, Joseph Smith and the Mormon Experience, and urban popular culture. So the period from the 1820s through the 50s constituted a great age of reform. Unsettled by the economic and demographic changes that characterized these decades, but inspired by a belief in the capacity of human beings to shape their own destinies, thousands of Americans engaged in a wide array of reform activities. Some, like Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau, uh, emphasized individual freedom and self-realization. Others hoped that carefully constructed institutions, such as asylums and penitentiaries, might help cure society's ills. Still others sought to improve their condition by creating utopian communities. The first of these, formed in 1784 uh, by the so-called Shakers after the death of their founder, Mother Ann Lee, uh, did not allow sexual intercourse and therefore relied on conversions and orphans for their increase. In the Oneida community, of upstate New York, uh, John Humphrey Noyes sought to free the pleasures of sexuality from the dangers of pregnancy and childbirth. Now, childbirth was a very, very dangerous thing back then. Um, still, while utopian reformers challenged the social norms of the emerging capitalist society, many more Americans were affected by a strange unrest in pursuit of opportunities to better their material lives, as Alexis de Tocqueville observed in the 1830s. One manifestation of this quest, aided by the transportation revolution, was the migration westward. In 1810, only one-seventh of the American population lived west of the Appalachians. By 1840, more than one-third did. But the movement of rural people and immigrants to America's cities was equally impressive. In 1800, New York City and Philadelphia had populations of 60,000 and 41,000, respectively. By 1840, New York had more than 30, 310,000 inhabitants, and Philadelphia, 150,000. Unfortunately, racism and nativism increased along with the population. Minstrel shows in which white actors in blackface entertained their audiences uh, by promoting crude racial stereotypes became perhaps the most popular form of theater. Edward Clay's popularity as a cartoonist was built on the same racist foundation, as his characters of life in Philadelphia would indicate. So, let's have a closer look at this section, Rural Communalism and Urban Popular Culture, by looking at, the, at first the Shakers. Led by Mother Anne Lee Stanley. The Shakers were the first successful American communal movement. The Shakers accepted the common ownership of property and a strict government by the church and pledged to abstain from alcohol, tobacco, politics, and war. Shakers believed that God was both male and female, but they eliminated marriage and were committed to a life of celibacy. Beginning in 1787, the Shakers founded 20 communities, mostly in New England, New York, and Ohio. Their agriculture and crafts, particularly uh, furniture making, enabled most of the communities to become self-sustaining and even comfortable. Shaker communities attracted more than 3,000 converts during the 1830s, uh, with women outnumbering men more than two to one, and they welcomed blacks as well as whites. Now, because Shakers had no children of their own, they relied on conversion or adoption of orphans to replenish their numbers and their population. The Shakers had virtually disappeared by the end of the 19th century. Okay, next is Arthur Brisbane and Fourierism. Charles Fourier, a French utopian reformer, uh, devised an eight-stage theory of social evolution and predicted the decline of individualism and capitalism. Arthur Brisbane, Fourier's disciple, 
believe that cooperative work groups called uh, uh, cooperative work groups called phalanxes would replace capitalist wage labor with socialism and liberate both men and women. Brisbane skillfully promoted Fourier's ideas in his influential book, The Social Destiny of Man, in 1840, uh, through a regular column in the New York Tribune and also via hundreds of lectures. In the 1840s, uh, Brisbane and his followers started nearly 100 cooperative communities, but they could not support themselves and quickly collapsed because of internal disputes over things like work responsibilities and social policies. So let's move on to John Humphrey Noyes and the Oneida community. The minister John Humphrey Noyes said about creating a community that defined sexuality and gender roles in radically new ways. Uh, Noyes, who was inspired by the preaching of Charles Finney, uh, was expelled from his congregational church and became a leader of something called perfectionism. Perfectionists believed that the second coming of Christ had already occurred and that people could therefore aspire to their perfection in their earthly lives and attain complete freedom from sin. Noyes and his followers embraced complex marriage, uh, all the members of the community being married to one another. Noyes sought to free women as being regarded as their husband's property and to free them from endless childbearing and child rearing. Opposition to this complex marriage in Noyes' hometown of Putney, uh, Vermont, uh, prompted him to move to Oneida, New York in the mid-1840s. The Oneida community became financially self-sufficient when one of its members invented a steel animal trap and others turned to silver manufacturing. Uh, the silver making business survived into the 20th century. The historical significance of the Shakers, the Fourierists, and Noyes and his followers is that they attempted to live their lives in what they conceived of as a more egalitarian social order and left their counterculture, uh, countercultural blueprints to posterity. All right, now let's look at Joseph Smith and the Mormons. The Mormons aroused more hostility than did the Shakers and, and the people in Oneida because the Mormons successfully attracted thousands of members to their controversial group. Uh, founder Joseph Smith believed God had singled him out to receive a special revelation of divine truth, which was then called the Book of Mormon. Smith organized the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, affirmed traditional patriarchal authority, encouraged hard work, savings of earnings, uh, and entrepreneurship, and started a church-directed community intended to inspire moral perfection. The Mormons eventually settled in, in uh, Nauvoo, Illinois, and became the largest utopian community in America. Resentment towards the Mormons turned to overt hostility when Smith refused to abide by some of the laws of Illinois, uh, asked that Nauvoo be turned into a separate federal territory, and then declared himself as candidate for president. Smith believed in polygamy, which is having more than one wife at a time. In 1844, Smith was murdered in jail after being arrested for trying to create a Mormon colony in Mexico. Led by Brigham Young, the Mormons then settled in the Great Salt Lake Valley and spread planned agricultural communities across present-day Utah, which was then a part of Mexico. Mormons who did not support polygamy remained in the United States. Led by Smith's son, they formed what was called the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. What we call the Mormon War, uh, then, was a bloodless encounter. Uh, President James Buchanan was afraid that if he tried to eliminate polygamy, it might set a precedent that could be used to end slavery. Mormons in Utah and the Midwest succeeded because they reinvigorated the patriarchal family, uh, endorsed private ownership of property, uh, and accepted the entrepreneurial spirit 
of a market economy. All right, so our last section is urban popular culture. As utopian reformers reorganized uh, new communities on their land, rural migrants and foreign immigrants created a new culture in the cities. Between 1800 and 1840, America experienced a high rate of urban growth. By 1860, New York numbered over one million residents. Urban growth generated a new urban culture. Young, working-class laborers, uh, domestic servants, and factory operatives engaged in uh, commercialized sex and serial monogamy while dressing in the latest fashion style. Uh, popular entertainment was another facet of the new urban culture, uh, particularly in New York. Uh, blood sports, boxing, uh, performances of Shakespeare, uh, and museums run by P.T. Barnum were popular attractions. Uh, the most important form of entertainment was, however, blackface uh, minstrels. A complex blend of race, racist caricature and social criticism in which white men masqueraded as African Americans. The shows reinforced white supremacy and class criticism of elite control of industry and politics. Many urban New Yorkers and Northeasterners disdained German and Irish immigrants, particularly the Irish, uh, and beginning in the 1830s created a violent and political nativist movement in an attempt to halt their arrival. Okay, so that does it for video lecture number 37. Please answer the review questions at the bottom of the screen and continue on with your reading.